So the second part of the radicals video is going to deal just with the operations with radicals. Really at the end of the day, radicals behave like variables. So if you can do something with a variable, you can do that with a radical. So for example, if you have 2x plus 3x, no one has any problem saying 5x. When we add radicals or add variables, we get coefficients. If I wrote 2 radical 7 plus 3 radical 7, the same thing would say 5 radical 7. So they behave in exactly the same way. If I had 2y plus 3x, I can't do anything. That's my final answer. In the same way that if I have 2 radical 7 plus 3 radical 5, I can't combine those answers either. So if you're in doubt, think about what would happen if that radical was replaced with a variable. And that will help kind of clear your path. So we can only add and subtract exactly the same radicals. And we always want to simplify our radicals before we do any operations. So in this first example, negative 2 square root of 5 minus a 3 square root of 5, my radicals are the same. If it was negative 2x minus 3x, we'd simply write negative 5x. So in this case, we write negative 5 square roots of 5. The variable doesn't change. My radical doesn't change. And so this is my final answer. Now here, remember you have a 1 there. So I have a negative 1 square roots of 3 plus 3 square roots of 3 minus 3 square roots of 3. Add up the coefficients. And what I'm left with is negative 1 square root of 3. Now that negative 1 in front is optional. It's also OK to write it like that, just like we would with a variable. Now, in this next example, square root of 12 and the square root of 27 are not in lowest form. And so at this point, I can't combine them. But I know that 12 has a perfect square of 4 in it. And I know that 27 has a perfect square of 9 in it. So when I use my simplifying rules, I have 2. The square root of 4 is 2 with a leftover of 3 plus 3. The square root of 9 is 3 with a leftover of 3. So I have 4 square roots of 3 plus 9 square roots of 3. So I really have 13 square roots of 3. So always be sure that you've simplified to make sure you've combined everything that you can combine. Now multiplication and division also works. So we're going to multiply the coefficients with coefficients, radicals with radicals, and simplify. So very similar to how variables work. Distributive property works. Always simplify when you're done. And FOIL works. Be sure to simplify when you're done. So in this first one, there's a negative 1, so I'm going to have negative 1 times 3, and the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, if I think about reorganizing everything. So I really have negative 3 times 6, which is negative 18, because the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 36, or you can think about it like this, or you can think about it like that. So, if I go to this next one, I have two choices. I can either simplify this first and then multiply, or I can multiply first. You will get the same answer. So if we go ahead, I have a coefficient of 1, so I have negative 2 times the square root of 12 times 3. Negative 2 times the square root of 36. 36 is a perfect square. Negative 2 times 6. I end up with negative 12. This next example is a distributive property example. And so radical 5 times radical 2 is radical 10. Radical 5 times radical 6 is radical 30. I can't simplify the square root of 10 or the square root of 30. I can't combine them because they're not the same. So that is my answer. Now when I go to look at these next two examples, don't be tricked by this first one. Remember what a squared means. It means there's two of them. And so when you write it out, you see that it's a FOIL problem. 
So you take your first two terms times each other. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Outside terms times each other plus the square root of 10. Inside terms times each other plus the square root of 10. Last two terms times each other plus the square root of 25. Go through and check. Square root of 4 can be simplified to 2. Square root of 10 plus the square root of 10 is 2 square roots of 10. The square root of 25 is 5. Combine like terms with the whole numbers. 7 plus 2 square roots of 10. And you can't combine it anymore because radical things only play with other radical things. Now if I look at this last example, this is another FOIL example. And so I go ahead and take first two terms. Now 5 times 1, I have 5. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. Outside terms, oh, that could be written at 2. So I could simplify before I started. So it's plus negative 2 radical 3 inside plus 5 radical 15 because this is a whole number times a whole number radical times radical and my last plus negative 2 square roots of 5 a whole number times a radical go through and check if you can combine anything or simplify any radicals the square root of 9 is 3 so I have 5 times 3 plus square root of 3 square root of 15 square root of 5 none of those can be simplified or combined And so then I just need to write 15 plus negative 2 radical 3 plus 5 radical 15 plus negative 2 radical 5. And that is your final answer because the radicals are in simplest form. None of them are the same, and so I cannot combine under my rules of addition or subtraction. Now division works essentially the same with one little tweak. And that's a good math grammar thing. So we're always going to simplify our radicals first, then we're going to cancel as we are able to cancel. Coefficients cancel with coefficients and radicals cancel with radical as long as everything is multiplication. And then we are going to rationalize the denominator. So I will show you what that means. That's our new step. So the first thing I see here is that the square root of 9 is really 3, and the square root of 16 is 4, and so this becomes 3 over 16, and I'm all done. Now, this one looks more complicated. Square root of 3 can't be changed. The square root of 4 can. That's 2. So my numerator is 4 plus 3 radical 3 all over 8. Now I need to check my fractions to see if I can simplify and if 4, 3, and 8 all have a common factor I would have to factor my numerator and cancel. If they don't, I'm done. You cannot cancel the 4 and the 8 because of that addition. So this is your final answer. Now when I look at this 4 square roots of 15 over 5 square roots of 6, I see this. I see 4 square roots of 5 times the square root of 3. That's still the square root of 15. And I see 5 square roots of 2 times the square root of 3. And that's still 6. And the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 cancels. And so if there's a common factor under the radical, you can use your canceling rules to cancel that out. So now we get into this math grammar bit. You cannot leave a radical in the denominator. And so much like making a common denominator for adding or subtracting, I need to figure out what I can multiply top and bottom by so that I don't change my number, but I get rid of that radical. And the easiest thing to do, if I have 4 square roots of 5 over 5 square roots of 2 left, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 square root of 2 over the square root of 2. The value of this is 1. So I'm not changing my number, but what I'm doing is I'm changing kind of the distribution of my number. And so I have 4 square roots of 10 over 5 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 
is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Now before I'm done, I see that 4 and 2 have a common factor of 2. So I have 2 square roots of 10 over 5. I haven't changed the numerical value of my problem. I've just made it into proper math form. So let's look at this next example. When I go through and look at this, I see perfect squares. So I have the square root of 3xy squared y squared all over 2 times 5x squared y squared. Now since those y squareds are both under the radical, I can cancel them. This one and this one I can take out as perfect squares and leave me 3x and 2x square root 5. Now, I can't leave that radical 5 in the denominator, and so I need to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. So what I get in the numerator is y square root of 15x all over 2x, and the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25 times 5. So that's going to simplify into y square root of 15x all over 10x. Now our last example of this section. Nothing can be simplified straight up, and so I have to rationalize first. The trick with this one is to treat that numerator like a single number. So in order to get rid of a radical 3 in the denominator, I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by radical 3. This ends up being a distributive property. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. And so I'm going to have in my denominator, which is 3, 5 times 3, which is 15. In my numerator, I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 15, square root of 3 times 5, plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. So this is going to be 3 square roots of 15 plus 3 over 15. Now I check four lowest terms, 3, 3, and 15 all have a common factor. So when I take that out, I have 3 times the square root of 15 plus 1 over 15. So I factored out a common factor of 3. It's going to cancel top and bottom, and I'm going to be left with the square root of 15 plus 1 all over 5. And that is how you do operations with radicals. And we will save the solving for another lesson.